Yep. I did it again. I already had this game. There's no reason for me to have this. But I love this game. So of course I found a way to justify this. I mean, isn't that what we do? Okay. So what is it? What is this behemoth of a game being delivered by these fine gentlemen at Beltman? Stick around to find out. Yeah, it's Road Blasters. But it's not any Road Blasters. It's the cockpit version of Road Blasters. So I love this game. I grew up with this game. It was one of those things I gravitated toward in the arcade. I don't know what it was. I think it might have been the unique controls, the fact that I was driving a car like a total badass with a gun on it. I don't know. I don't know what it was, but it was just one of those games that stuck with me. And when I had the chance to get the cockpit, well, convince someone to sell me the cockpit, I traded my stand-up for the cockpit. That person's Justin, and um, yeah, I got him to agree. And so, he's got the stand-up, and I've got the cockpit. Okay, so you're probably wondering, what kind of work does this thing need? Well, the game does work, which that's a plus, but the cabinet needs a lot of restoration work. The roof of this thing looked rough. Now, I used a combination of Mother's California Gold Instant Detailer and a clay bar to remove whatever the heck this was on the roof. I even used a polishing pad and one more product. Ha, gotcha. I used this scratch remover, which is actually for cars. So I'll have a link to all this stuff in the description just in case you ever have to do this. So, so far, I'm working on the roof of this thing but there's a lot more work that has to be done. So you're probably wondering what makes the cockpit more unique outside of the fact that it is a cockpit and it's really this screen inside. So this is actually a 19 inch CRT, but it appears almost like it's like a 25 inch or larger CRT because there's a magnifying glass on the screen. Now this technology is interesting because it was also used on really early model TVs. It was this thing you could put in front of your TV to magnify it. Kind of weird technology, but it works really great in this application. Okay, so you're probably wondering what does it take to run this thing? Well, it runs on the Atari System 1 and that System 1 architecture is right behind this door. So you kind of have to prop this door open and this door, unfortunately, is a lot harder to open because, um, I don't know, probably over time the wood has sort of warped or changed a little bit. But the board's down here, I'm gonna show it to you in a second. And it's interesting because the original Atari system architecture has a cartridge, has a main board, and then the cartridge plugs into the main board. Uh, this is like a two board stack, so it's good and bad. It's good because it fits nicely behind this door. It's bad because I'm assuming this is the only application where Atari did this. So if I have a problem, it's probably more rare to find this board than it is to find the traditional main board and cartridge. And I have one in my Roadrunner, so I'll see if I can show that to you. So here's what I mean when I say this architecture is different, because that's the main board and then that's the cartridge. So basically this is the traditional Atari System 1 architecture and you'd basically swap out the main board for whatever game it was that you wanted to play in the system. You'd swap the marquee and the control panel. Unfortunately, the cockpit's not like this. Other Atari System 1 titles include Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, Marble Madness with its unique trackball controls, very cool game, Peter Packrat, only 500 of these were made and I don't ever see them, never seen one out in the wild. Road Blasters, this came in a stand-up and a cockpit with a really cool yoke style controller. And then Road Runner, this one is really rare, hard to find and quite expensive if you're looking for one. Now the cockpit and the upright do share some similarities. There's a power brick, although this one is slightly different. And there's a discrete audio amplifier as well as the main board, except like I said, this is kind of a stack. And the other unique thing is it actually has a subwoofer. So not only does it have a right and left channel, but it also has a subwoofer. And you know, I'm gonna upgrade this guy. As I was doing some research on the cockpit version of Road Blasters, I came across this blog called Keith's Arcade. He acquired a cockpit version of the game as well, but he decided to cut it in half and add more of a comfortable seat and basically take the roof off. I think this is cool and I appreciate what he did here, but with these being somewhat of a dying breed, I'm gonna try my best to keep mine original. I really do have my work cut out for me with this thing. So if you look behind the monitor bezel, 
You can see there's like some straws back there, some M&Ms, a chocolate bar. So there's a lot of basic cleanup I have to do on top of the restoration as a whole. I don't know what to say. I couldn't be more excited to have a Road Blasters cockpit in GarageCade. Now granted, this thing takes up a ton of space, so that's it's rather limiting right now. So I'm not gonna be able to bring in any new games. So this is gonna be my main project and focal point for a little while. And yeah, I know, I still haven't gotten to the KI. I don't know, I'll get to it. I promise I'll get to it, but it's just not as important to me. This is Road Blaster's cockpit. It's a cockpit. Yeah, yeah, we got a Road Blaster's cockpit. Anyway, so there's stuff that needs to be done with this. I gotta do the floorboards. They're looking a little rough. I'm gonna figure that out. The side panels that are metal here are a little rusted out, so I'm gonna sand those down to the bare metal, give them a nice new coat of paint, and then I gotta figure out how to take the roof off this thing. I have no idea how. There's straws, there's candy bars, Rolos. I love Rolos. They're all inside there. I have no idea how they even got in there. I guess people found holes in the cabinet and shoved it through, but anyway. So I know I said I couldn't get inside the cabinet, but it's actually a lot simpler than I thought. There's four screws and the monitor actually comes out of the back. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna discharge the CRT because I wanna see what junk is in this arcade. Mason, you're just gonna have to edit this clip, okay? The arcade's powered off, so we're good there. It's on the chassis, we'll discharge the CRT. Okay, should we discharge, should we good? All right, we're gonna unplug to power. I'm gonna pull this out, and then we're gonna see all the junk behind it, okay? Got it, I think. Okay, don't break anything, don't break the arcade. Oh no, look at all that crap in there. I was right, it was an M&M's wrapper. Strawberry Chews. I thought it was a ro oh, look at my eye. I knew it was a Rolo. A ton of straws, there's a lot of straws in here. Oh, gross, there's like a ton of toothpicks. Ooh, a pixie stick. See if there's anything still left in it. Just all straws. This is gross in here, man. I got some silverware. This is nice, man. The wheat. Like, who puts this stuff in an arcade? All right, well, I'm gonna clean this later, but at least we know how to get it out now. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and checking out this project. I'm super excited. Thanks to Justin for, um, I don't know, I guess, being convinced to actually make this trade. I, I, this, is, this is really, really exciting to me. This is a rare piece and I promise I will do it justice. I'll make sure it looks really good. So if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel, put your comments below. I want to hear from you, and that's it for now. We will see you on the next one.